and really put together a group of young folk along with a, a group of older folk that, uh, that really helped to change things. I mean, so many great things come out. I, I remember two key things, and, uh, th and, and we, I really want to hold up uh, Mike Curry and Randy Haynes and Angela Perry and company. They did the Youth Summit over at UMass Boston, and uh, they also did the Black History Day uh, down at uh, John, the John Hancock Building. And those two, dude, those two times were awesome. Um, another time where I think, uh, I'm from New York personally, and, and I know that when I came here, I was looking for kind of like the soul of Boston. I, I was looking for it, you know? And uh, there's one club called Afrocentrics that um, was held every Wednesday. And it was inspirational for me because I went in that club and there wasn't all the, the foolishness that was going on that you find at some of the other clubs, like Three C's, K's, Oasis, whatever. You know what I mean? But, but there, was, there was some folks who were there to have a good time, to talk about intellectual stuff, and read their poetry, and showcase their talent. I mean, they brought the last poets, and Sarah Jones. I mean, these people were awesome. They were incredible. And, uh, and, and that's what you're ready. Absolutely. And, um, but th there's one last that was dear to my heart, and uh, that's the South Central Ministry of the Boston Church of Christ. Yeah. Um, there's a, these are a group of men. I've never in my life seen a group of more dedicated men. I mean, these men, we get up 5.30 every morning, and we sit down with our minister, and we pray over the city of Boston. And we go out and we reach out to different men. I've seen so many lives change. It's been incredible. And that's just not a sell. I mean, Michael Morris, some of you may yeah. be familiar with, he was part of the Million Man Mobilization Committees. And he just made the decision, I'm going to take the black men who are dedicated to God, and we're going to go and do something for the community, thus matching the scripture that I talked about. And, and exhibiting that, that integrity with Daniel. So I think those are three things that, that definitely inspired me about Boston, and I think it had an effect on the whole city. Yeah.
explore the ways that you can get results from your elected officials. Um, and then it says, be proactive. That's the third sentence. I mean, be proactive. You know, at 22, I mean, I don't take myself that seriously. Keep in mind, you know, there's nothing that smart about me. You know, it's just like I can't rule the world by myself. But, you know, you got to start taking responsibility for your own actions. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there are no handouts in life. Nobody's going to give you anything. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you a little story. I'm like, kind of short. But, you know, <laughs> I went to Boston Lab High School. I went to BC for college. You know, I came out of college, and I've been told my whole life, get an education, you're going to get a good job, where do we have to corporate ladder? That was the Inroads program, and uh, you know, all throughout my senior year, I thought I was going to get my nice offer. And you know, I asked for the offer in September. You know, March came around, April came around, May came around, nothing, nothing. June came around. I'm like, where's my job offer? I mean, there's no handouts, mm -hmm. and um, it's kind of you got to start doing things for yourself. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, nobody's going to give you anything. You know, in uh, 20 seconds, all right. <laughs> Today. I sell life insurance, I do mutual funds, I'm a comedian, I do bar mitzvahs. That's good. <laughs> is uh, what are some of the barriers against black folks participating in politics in the city? I mean, Dr. Brown gave some powerful examples of victories. Um, and sadly, a lot of those victories are not, you know, yesterday, they're not last week. Um, there's some recent examples, but the numbers are lower than we'd like to see them. So I'd like to have people in the room think about what's holding us back as a people in the city from participating in politics. And if you could, along with your response to that question, share a suggestion something that might help us to mobilize black folks to get involved in higher numbers. Um, and that's, this is open to everyone in the room. I'd like to just make a suggestion about that in terms of, um, now we're, I understand what everyone in the panel and the, and the audience have said about the past, because the past is very important where we're going to be in the future. But in terms of the political future of the city and in this country, it basically not only hinges on grassroots, but a lot of money's involved in campaigns. Uh, I just want to be realistic with people. And I think the way that we're really going to become a powerhouse in this city is to really get the corporate minorities involved in not only grassroots or inner city issues, but to basically try to find a way to raise the money. Um, the political action committees, I don't think we have any in this city or in this state that's ran by a minority. You have the Black Lawyers uh, Association, you have a lot of the partnership. Those are the things we need to help them tap into, is to build a political action committee that will hopefully raise, you know, $25, $50, $100 a plate dinners, and then fund the candidate that you really want to be out there for lieutenant governor or governor. I mean, the last campaign for governor was an astronomical amount of money. Ted Kennedy ran in 1994 against Mitt Romney, $15 million each. It's not, let's just be very realistic about the fact that grassroots alone cannot do it. And I think as we go into uh, the next century and people are getting very professional, you also have to be able to say, what, is, what are the cutting edges in politics? And the cutting edges is the political action committees. And I think too that party politics is also hurting us. Um, although I do, I love the Democratic Party, I think they've done a lot, but at the same time, they have taken advantage of the minority vote throughout this country. And so for the next uh, election in the year 2000, they have to know where, where, um, where our votes lie. It's just not the corporate minorities or the middle class or upper class minor, uh, blacks that should be benefiting from, from these elections, but you too who have no money. And we talk about South Boston or wherever else. I don't think they should just be the model for how we conduct ourselves in terms of what we do, but we also have to look at what other people are doing successfully in the political climate that we're living in. And Boston is about uh, money, politics, and revenge. And the reality is, is that 
when you're in politics in this city, people never ever forget what you what you've done or what you said. And I ran a, a campaign, and I'm sure there's some people on the other side that will never forgive me for what I've said or done, regardless of if they respect me or not. The reality is, though, we raised the money. We're um, after uh, Senator Diane Wilkerson. We're, we're, we raised as you know close to as much money as she did to to get our message out there. And so the reality is, is um, money talks in politics. And I know it sounds very good about let's get involved, let's get on. I sit on a board, I sit, I've sat on boards before, Central Boston Elder Services, Rocks Comp, you know, and I do want to get involved, but I, in running a campaign in, in this day and age, it just takes a lot. And, and my campaign manager, Bianca Perez, and the press secretary, Tiffany Warren, can tell you that is the, um, we have to get the corporate, the suburban, blacks, Hispanics, really, really involved in the process. Although they, you know, they move and they may be from Harvard, Suffolk, wherever, law school, or doctors, wherever they are, and they're living in Milton, Weston. We have Duval Patrick, we have Wayne Butt. We have very successful minorities that they don't have to live in the city for us to tap into them. They raise astronomical amount of money for their candidates. Ask Duval Patrick how much money did he raise for Hodge Barber. Ask for, um, how much money Wayne Butt raised for Tom Riley. It was no joke. These people can raise some cash, and, and we need to really build a political action committee, even if it's headed by you know, a respectable person who can then say, okay, blacks have just raised a million dollars. We're going to put $50,000 in back one governor, and money talks. You will be at the seat of decision making in the next administration. So it's just not about let me get involved, let me get part of the electoral process, but we need the capital also um, to really merge with all our aspirations. And I think um, we need to get the young people involved in just running for political office also. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, David. Thank you. I'm going to take the time wanting as many voices as possible. I appreciate, I appreciate that opening um, to this question. So a member of the audience will come with your question and, and solution. Again, my name is Rosa Newton. Uh, I wanted to address, I guess, what, Kella, that's your name? Yes, what, what, what you said. I wanted to address three points, actually. Politics, corporate America, and civil rights history. Just very quickly, in terms of making ourselves effective, I speak to what, I'm sorry, I, I forget your name. Brown. 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 Um, you spoke of all the work that, has, that was done that we don't need. And all that happened, and with all that energy, and all of that, you know, I, I wonder what happens. And what maybe I don't know if anything stop, but I, I look back. I remember I lived in Rochester once with my aunt and uncle. I'm not from. I didn't. I was born in Boston. But I was raised out in Newton. Mm -hmm. So I'm what you call a suburban mm -hmm. black. Um, we were brought in. Mm -hmm. well, it's suburban black. Anyway. Um, and living in Dorchester, I, I used to put all these old newspapers. And they used to show pictures of the black community, and they were so dignified, so beautiful, and everyone was here. And I said, well, "What happened? You know, what, 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 you know?" And um, my my friend is running for office. Can you to explain to me? He said, "You know, back then, black people were Republican. They were." They, Sister Rose, I'm going to just remind you that we're focusing on solutions. Right. So okay. In terms of politically, when black people seem to have been shining, they were Republican, and, and I think one of our mistakes is that we. Put our eggs in one basket. We, we're, we're, I mean, here traditionally, once Kennedy came to power, I mean, to, to make a long story short, I think we, uh, we should spread our political support because all is not in the Democratic Party. In terms of corporate America, you know, for someone who's, who's unemployed, and I want to be able to give my money and support to candidates, I, I was fired. I was fired for doing a good job. I was fired for being one of the best. And that's, that doesn't make any sense. So corporate America maybe needs to take some notice because there are people who are getting you know, screwed over for no good reason. And lastly, you're speaking about, um, goodness, you need money. You, as Bill Bradley said, a poor man's pulpit is not a rich man's wallet. That's true. But the same way in our history, when the Haitians took over, in Haiti back in 1804, they had no money, but they took over. So there, there are ways of harnessing power. Power is for those who have the courage and who are a little crazy enough to take it. So, and who are organized. Look, look at the people who are organized and the families. One thing I give the present administration is that they care for their own people and they know how to operate. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the Again, I'm going to challenge us, y'all, to really keep in mind that what we're doing is focusing on solutions 
and suggestions, strategies. You know, this is a rare opportunity that we have with this many brilliant people in the room focusing on this. What are strategies to get black folks in Boston involved in the political process? So let's really focus our comments on that and also be cognizant of time if a member of the panel might speak to some strategies and solutions. Okay, I'm to do this very, very quickly. Um, you know, I'm the visitor from Oz across the uh, river, so I can say incendiary things and I can go back over there. Uh, one of my hobbies is watching Boston black politics because it's fascinating. Uh, when I started this hobby, it used to amaze me how in black Boston there was these, like family dynasties. Like, I think at one time one family had three members who were elected. Oh. It was bowling, bowling, bowling. So I used to, when people went to the polls, how did they know which bowling they were bowling for? Because often, you know, with surnames, people don't know. Like you throw three washes in, how do you know you have the right wash? And I, I was just amazed that that could be, or Owens, Owens, Hicks. And that was a sort of trend here. And I used to wonder, do people really know which of the people they're voting for? Now, you can never argue with the voter in politics because the voter is always right. The result is always right. You always get who they said. Now, I think in terms of Boston politics, what I think I see, I think this is a very vibrant community. It troubles me deeply as a visitor from Oz why more people don't register to vote. It's a, a huge question because really voter participation in Boston is terrible. It's terrible nationally, but it's particularly terrible here because you have a lot of people who do a lot more. That's terrible over my way too, but it's less terrible. Now, what can you do about it? Or why is that so? Now, as somebody from Oz who's also from Detroit, what I see here that is a distinct difference, and I, I came here to really say two little things. One is that one of the great and substantial weaknesses in the foundation of black political Boston is Home ownership is too damn low. You don't own enough of the city. And it's not the fault of the black people. But now that the banks are opening up, now that we're in the hottest economy ever, you all have to go try to buy something, anything, anything. Because before this discussion is over, State of Young Black Boston, the entire area we in will have changed color. And you, if you want about suburban blacks, you will be, the, 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 it is a real diaspora where it is. So please buy something. I don't care what it is. Let go of the nail tips, the intention. <laughs> buy a Now, how does that work? How can the religious community overrule the elected 